Hey everybody, welcome back. <clears throat> Today we are continuing from our last video. If you didn't watch the last video and you don't have this section set up the same way as I do, um, you'll really you might want to do that because you might have trouble in this one. So we're going to create a Mongo or create a ma model. Uh, CRUD Part One: Create. So this is an acronym: Create, um, Read, Update, and Destroy. So Part One is Create. Uh, first of all, we need a schema. Each schema uh, maps to the MongoDB collection. It defines the shape of the documents within that collection. Schemas are building blocks for models. They can be nested to create complex models, but in this case, we'll keep things simple. A model allows you to create instances of your objects called documents. REPL.IT is a real server, and, it, and in real servers, the interactions with the database happen in the handler functions. These function are executed when some event happens. Example, someone hits an endpoint on your API. Uh, we'll follow the same approach in these exercises. The done function is a callback function that tells us that we can proceed after completing an asynchronous operation, such as inserting, searching, updating, or deleting. <clears throat> it fo it, it's following the node convention that should be called as done null data on success, or done and then error. On error, a uh, warning. When interacting with model services, errors may occur. So when we interact with models, errors sometimes occur. So here's an example. We have some function and we set it equal to an anonymous function with a parameter of done. And then we're going to do something risky. And then we say if error, return done with error. Else we're going to say done with null and the result. The result will be equal to is a, I'm not sure exactly how that works. So we create a person having this prototype. So we want to have a name which corresponds with a string, an age which corresponds with a number, and favorite foods which corresponds with an array of strings. So we want to use ba Mongo basic schema types. If you want, you can also add more fields. Use simple validators like required or unique and set default values. See the Mongo stocks. Okay, so let's open up the Mongo stocks and check a look at them. And also we have on our third screen our REPL.IT <clears throat> in the middle. So this is the, our old one, and so now we're moving down here. So here's the exact same uh, instructions, just in a different format. And so we want to have our code go here. And so if I check out the schemas, you can see here's an example of a blog schema. So they say new schema, and then they've got the title with the author, and then they have comments. And um, yeah, so I think we could actually just uh, kind of copy the documentation here and then go back to our our, our password here. Here we have <clears throat> person. Well, we want the person to be equal to a new schema, and then we want to be able to close it out. So instead of string is shorthand for, for type string. Okay, so type string. Okay, so well, first we want to say name of string. So we want to have our schema have a name of a string and make it required. And um, I'll just get rid of this one. Well, no, I guess we could go here. We can go age. And we want this to be, we want the age to be a number, right? So number, capital N, because it's a data type. Numbers are data types. Okay, so we've got name, string, age, and now we want to do a favorite foods. And then we'll go... We want to make it an array of strings. I think it's like that. Okay, so now let's look back at the documentation. Let's say an array. Do we see string in here at all? An array of strings. Well, I think having the array of strings is the right way to go. Um, let's say array. <laughs> New schema name, toys, array, strings. So here you see it, it's like that. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to go back, and I'm going to press Command F, and I'm going to say Require. <clears throat> so let's see here. Required true. New schema name is of a type of string and required true. For legacy reasons, when there is a validation error in the subpath, oop, oh, where was that? 
Mong Mongoose record that there was a validation error in the thing. Okay, so here they have a child schema and they've got a name just like ours, but then they've got type of string and required is equal to true. So let's utilize that for ours. Command two, string. Now instead of it being name string, I'm going to say name type string and required is equal to true. So we'll pass an object in there. Uh, <clears throat> glitch is a real server and real interactions. Uh, some function to do, risky. Okay, crud, part one, create. Create and save a person. Okay, so this, it looks like we've completed it for this, but I don't think that this will pass. If I were to stop and rerun the server, and then I copied, okay, we've got an error message. Schema is not defined. New schema. Huh. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say schema is not defined. This seems like a straightforward error. Uh, let's see what happens if you just Google it. Mongoose and new schema returns reference error. <laughs> okay, so this is the code that they have. This looks very similar to ours. Exactly in your service JS, what is schema? You don't have an object named schema. Change this to mongoose.schema and it'll be fine. Okay, so let's go back over here and say mongoose.schema and now we'll run it. Stop the server and then run the server. Your app is listening on port 3000. Okay, so that seems to be working. Um, so, but what we need to do now is instantiate the one. So I'm going to come back over to the monkey, the documents, and you know I'm actually seeing a problem here. Okay, what we want to do is kind of mock this style. So we say we say mongoose is required. Set it equal to mongoose. So if we come back over here and we scroll up, const mongoose require is equal to require mongoose. Require mongoose. There, schema is equal to mongoose.schema. So instead of having it come down, instead of assigning schema here, instead of saying new mongoose.schema, the way that they're having us do it is say up here, we say schema is equal to mongoose.schema. So if I come back over here, and I'm actually going to get rid of this now because I think that that kind of fit, pass, passes our test. We're just going to get rid of these comments as we move along because they're frustrating. So um, here we've got ver schema is equal to mongoose.schema. So now instead of saying mongoose.schema down here, we can just call this schema. And um, if we look over here, you'll see that they actually have it set up. So they're, they're say, calling this the, the blog schema, not the schema in general. So if we come back over here, instead of saying person, I think what we want to do is say person schema, person schema. Okay, and then once we have our person schema set up, we can see this is where they just kind of describe this, and I'd encourage you to read this. And then what we can do is we can create the model. And so I'm going to just copy this into here for now. And so we need to create this model because now we've created the person schema. So instead of saying a ver of blog, we want to call this person. Because really what they're doing here is they're setting up the overall uh, blog schema. And so here we want to set up the person schema, the mongoose.model, and then we can pass in here person. And then instead of saying blog schema, we want to say person schema. And this actually might develop our schema, which is um, what we're looking for to do. So um, I'm just, again, I'm going to stop this server and run it again. And then here you can see app is listening on port 3000. This is good news. This is, tells me that we're not getting any errors. So I'm going to copy our URL. Um, and if you were to, you know, throw this URL in over here, you would see that it's working. And so I'm going to take this back over here and paste it into here into our free code camp, uh, create a model. 
and we're going to run the test to see if they pass. Okay, create an instance for a mongoose schema should succeed. Okay. Okay, so let's say we need to create a person. So um, let's see, how would we do that? The schema model const doc is equal to new model. Schema model new model await doc dot save instances of method. Animal schema is new. This is how you make a new one. Status query helpers indexes. Okay, so here we've got. We want to use the. This is how they're making a person. So this they're saying a new person with this setup. Um, so I'm just going to copy that and move it over to here, and let's going to say. Um, let a uh, useful programmer equal new person with the name and here we have the name as a string so instead of passing in an object we're going to pass in um, useful programmer that's the required one so that's probably all we need but we could go age um, 100. Now that needs to be a number, so we don't want to pass it in as a string. We want to pass it in as that. Let's call it 22. I'm not 22. It's just a number I like. And then favorite foods. Oh, look, I'm already seeing an error. I misspelled favorite here. Favorite foods. Okay, and then in here, we're going to pass in an array of uh, pizza and uh, sushi. Okay. And so now, I do believe that we have created an instance of person, not just uh, the uh, gear, gearing for it. So let's stop the server and then run the server and see if it passes. So as you can see, the app is listening. That means we don't have any specific errors. And so I'm going to copy the URL, come back over to the main guy. I actually don't need to paste it in because it's already there. So now I'm just going to say I've completed the challenge. All right, so that was it. Um, once again, first off, we require, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of the stuff we've already done because it's annoying to look at. Um, once we get rid of the mongoose setup, we don't need this anymore. Okay, so first off, <clears throat> we require mongoose. We connect mongoose using our private URI and we set up whatever thing that, that does. And then we set a variable equal to schema. So mongoose.schema is equal to schema. The next thing that we do is we create a new schema for person schema. The person schema becomes equal to this new schema. And we pass this in, in which the name is a string where it, it's required, is true, and its age is a number, and its favorite food is an array of strings. So then what we do is we create an actual person uh, instance, like a creator, there's a specific word here that I'm not sure, but this is, the, this is the way we can set new person now and have it be saved to the database. So mongoose.model is equal to person. So we set it equal to the string of person. And then the person schema is passed in second. This is the mongoose.model. Um, I think you could get this mongoose.model in the instructions. Yeah, and so this is where you learn this stuff. And again, this is just through going through the documentation, the person schema. And then we want to say useful programmer. We set the variable of useful programmer in snake case equal to a new person. So we're instantiating a new person with the following uh, objects worth of attributes. And so that's how that works. Um, yeah. It's allowed in the node convention. Should be called as done data or success done error. When interacting with remote services, errors may occur. So here they're saying do something risky. I'm just going to check this out. I want to see what this does. Some function. Uh, let another useful programmer equal a function and done. And then I'm going to uncomment this guy. And here we're going to do something new, uh, risky, which is like copy this guy and paste it in here. So I think this would be an example of what the risky thing would be. Uh, but we want to say let uh, 
uh, we can just say we would just want to return a new person like this. And I'm just going to comment this out for the time being because we want to know if this is causing us to, causing our code to break. And um, because it's multi line comments, we want to do it like that. Okay, so let's stop the server and run the server and see what happens. Okay, that did not work. Something missing something, the function done, new person. Okay, I need to have this guy in here. Turn done. Okay, so now I'm gonna run the server again. Scroll down to the bottom. App is listening on port 3000. All right, and now if I copy this and run it again, I'm just gonna refresh this page so it clears everything out. Um, because I think that they put this in here for a specific reason, so we wanna do that. If we run the server, okay, that passes too. Um, so yeah, just to go over it again, uh, we, we, do, we create the Mongoose setup, um, we connect to the Mongoose database, we set up a schema, which is just a shorthand word for mongoose.schema. So now whenever we do new schema, we're actually calling mongoose.schema. So mongoose.schema, um, and then we're, we're saying a person schema. So we're setting a variable equal to a mongoose instance of schema equal to, in which we have a schema file looking like this. And then we say, we're gonna set our person equal to a, uh, the, then we're setting up the person um, instance variable or instance constructor, the constructor for a person. So we say mongoose.model uh, is equal to person. And so we're setting the string of person to make that model for mongoose. And then we're telling it to use the person schema, which it, we've set up here. Um, and then, so yeah, and then I'm gonna get rid of this because we don't need this anymore. And then we say another useful, or we'll just call this one useful programmer. So the useful programmer is equal to what happens from this function. And so what we say is return this, but the, if there's something wrong with this, we're going to return the error. We're get, and we're gonna return it to the done function, which is part of uh, Mongo, I believe, MongoDB. And so that's how we, we interact with that. And so here, They've got the example, here they're creating a new person, but they're not creating a new person, they're just saying do something risky. For us, doing something risky is creating this new person and returning that, and so we're good to go with this. And so I wanna get rid of all this because I'm trying to just clean it up as we move along. Now that we've completed this setup, we've done the mongoose setup, we can move in to our next session, which is called create. But um, that was just me describing what was going on. Again, if we run over here and we pop in you know, our URL from our project into this guy, you can see that we've com completed this challenge and we're ready to move on to the next one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, we'll see you in the next one.